This is an RC sailboat that has no apparent sail. I made it after I started experimenting with RC sailboats because I usually make RC planes, but I found the concept of RC sailboats pretty interesting and wanted to try it out. My first attempt was pretty crappy. And yes, the sail is made out of trash bags. Don't judge me. That's when I remembered a video made by Peter Schriepel a couple years ago uh, where he used two spinning KFC buckets as the wings for an airplane. And then I thought I could just use that for a sail uh, instead of trash bags or a conventional sail. This type of sail is called a Flettner rotor, and it uses the Magnus effect to produce lift or thrust in this case by deviating the moving air or wind uh, around the spinning tube, sort of like a wing or a uh, sail to create lift. I hadn't seen many people really experimenting with it on an RC scale, so I decided that since I already had electronics and motors and stuff, I would just try it. Side note, James from Project Air recently made a video about this, and I wish that it had been on there like a couple years ago because it would have been really helpful. Almost nobody on YouTube had made a decent video on it. So I put a PVC tube directly onto the brushless motor, which is probably not a great idea, but hey, it works. It's not overheating or anything. Uh, although I would love to eventually get something where it's better designed, like with the gear ratio or something. And it works pretty well. It doesn't use a lot of power. And even on this small battery, it can still last like an hour or two. So that's cool. Oh, and the pontoons uh, are made out of folded insulation foam with more foam on the inside. And they're held together with hot glue and duct tape. And then the center section is made out of wood and connected to the pontoons on the sides. Oh, and did I mention on my first test that I discovered that hot glue doesn't actually work very well in water? Uh, yeah, my first pontoons came completely off the wooden center uh, and nearly broke off while it was testing. So um, keep that in mind, and that's why it's reinforced with duct tape, because otherwise it would fail. As you're probably beginning to see, the amount of jankiness on this boat is beginning to rise by the second. So uh, before it falls apart, let's see how it actually worked. So I took it to a lake on a fairly windy day and uh, it seemed to work pretty well. The big keel and big rudder definitely helped a lot in keeping it stable. And it seemed to actually like really handle real well and it was actually being able to track pretty well and I was able to go upwind and downwind and you know perpendicular to the wind and everything really well uh, and the Fletner rudder was definitely working. Oh and because of the way the rotor worked you could even sail backwards or do these really weird 180 degree turns which just don't look right. I've never seen a sailboat do one of those and it just looks so wrong. It like something about it just doesn't look right it's weird because i've never seen a sailboat start drifting that way and uh yeah i don't know this sailboat can like tokyo drift around the lake it's really weird the way you sail with one of these is by spinning the tube in either one direction or the other to influence which direction the thrust goes this type of sail is the most efficient only when it's perfectly perpendicular to the wind and this is where we see the first design flaw I didn't put any type of streamer or anything on the boat, so I had very little information to go on for knowing which direction the actual wind was going. Because the wind was moving around different things and you couldn't really tell exactly where it was actually coming from, especially from the boat's point of view. Also, although I was getting thrust, I wasn't getting as much as I theoretically could have had. The reason for this is because my rotor is very thin and would need to be much taller or much faster to compensate for its large aspect ratio. Instead, for the next version, I will just make my rotor much thicker. It should be able to produce more thrust and more drag, but that doesn't really matter as much in this case. Even though my boat looks like junk and uh, uses electronics which are inefficient and aren't designed for this at all, uh, the fact that it works at all is really surprising to me and I'm really happy with the results. So uh, in the future, I'll be sure to try to redesign my uh, flattener rotor to make it thicker, and then I'll try it again. And so thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. Bye.